right, so next up, the engine. I already began doing a bunch of work on it, so let me just bring you guys up to speed. So this is a 2J, again, uh, this is an extremely low mileage 2J GE from a Supra. Uh, I think this engine has probably on the, I would easily say on the 40,000 miles on it. Maybe a lot less. Um, but you guys did not see it, but then taking apart everything, the bolts showed no sign of anyone has ever tampered with this engine. So I do believe it's an extremely low mileage engine. I know the history of this engine, but uh, for now, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. So it's a GE, um, originally distributor EC, um, engine. So what I'm doing now, I'm just gonna, I'm just stripping out everything that I can. I already took off the timing belt and whatnot, although it does have a genuine toyota belt that looks to be in very good condition i'll try to put the part number up here in case you guys want to figure what that is but it did look like the engine was not leaking anything but again so easy to make the mistake of wanting to just throw the engine and and run it with a supposedly 20 year old timing belt easily so I already bought a bunch of Toyota goodies and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to reseal, cam, crank, valve cover and go ahead and just clean up this and pin the block and should look a lot better when we're done and then at least I'll know for certain that it's safe and I'm not just going to pop a timing belt the minute I go to crank the engine. Alright, so I got the oil pan off and this is what the inside of an extremely low mileage 2JZ GE looks like. Alright, so it looks like whoever had this engine previously did keep up excellently with the oil changes. So everything in there is just looking light brown, none of that dark blackish looking color from irregular oil changes. So so far, so good. Check the oil, no sign of bearing material in the sump so that is also a good thing so next up just gonna go ahead and throw on the the front sump on there skipped a few hours but with the help of my little helper yeah and i'm painting my bike <laughs> okay he's in the middle of scrapping his bike since we painted the block black yeah, we came out. Uh, my thing is, I'm going for that whole blackout thing. But anyways, we'll get back to that. But Jaden is just scrapped his bike, uh, took off everything. So next step, what do you have to do? I have to walk, close it down to get all the oil and everything. Tomorrow afternoon, I have to sandpaper it. Mm -hmm. Then we'll spray paint it. Okay. And what color are you spray painting it? Black and blue. <laughs> all right. So Jaden is going to spray paint his bike black and blue. But the block is done, tomorrow I'll be tackling the timing and I'm also thinking of taking this off whilst I have to do the cam, the cam seals. Probably going to paint this black spin, as well. Spin, spin. Yeah, so black, black, silver. Alright, so we're going to sign off for today, right? Yeah, bye-bye. Alrighty, boys and girls, so a few days has passed and let me show you how far. I've gotten with the 2J. So, bit of a radical transformation, if I may say so myself. So again, this video has been spanning over a few days, so not even sure what I have in the previous clips. But uh, I painted the block some rust oleum black, I think they call it semi-gloss, and I just used that to pin the top. Um, not really completely happy with how the top came out. Um, this engine did have a bit of corrosion both on the aluminum and uh, iron because uh, it literally sat for a better part of i think i call it 15 years 17 years more than likely but call it closer to 15 years so uh, so i did try my best to clean it up so this i the current the timing gear i have i don't have the tool the pulley extractor to pull that so i'm gonna tackle that later and then throw the belt back on and the water pump and the tension and whatnot um but i also test fitted these guys in here so these four well these are our audi quote unquote r8 coils but they 
pretty much Volkswagen Audi group coils. They come on a number of vehicles, but commonly known as Audi R8 coils in the aftermarket industry. I had these four on the SR20 and Weaver WTM Tronics. Good friend, um, sponsor, supporter, everything of the channel, but mainly a good friend. Um, Hook me up with these two, so now I have six for the Supra. I do plan on making a little custom mounted bracket to help with this, but for the most part, um, that's how it's gonna sit. Um, so again, overall, this did come out looking very good. I am going for that whole black film. I not, again, I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the last video. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna stop on this for a few days. Um, Till I get the timing gear thingy um, extractor and gonna pick it up after that. But I'm not sure if I ever told you guys what I actually intend to do with this engine. So again, um, I always go against the green, right? So most people who do 2J builds, the builds always end up being big power, etc. etc. This one will ultimately end up with some big power, but it's gonna take, I'm gonna I thought about it and I'm probably gonna do it in some stages. So to make this more relatable to every single person looking to do a 2J and not looking to do that thousand horsepower bill. Um, this one ultimately is going to be run on uh, stock injectors. I think these injectors are 290 cc, so should be able to give us 250, maybe 270 wheel with the water injection. And just to make sure all the systems are working because it's a new build trans is getting some work done engine new harness and probably drive it around for a little bit like that and then after that i'm gonna throw on some bigger injectors and then turn it up um also gonna be on the stockhead gasket and the stockhead studs at least for the first couple of weeks again just so i i think that usually what happens is sometimes we throw ourselves into the deep end a bit quick where it's all fine and good to do a 2j but if you if you try to make everything perfect it's not even just a 2j rb 4g 6 whatever engine and you try to make everything perfect most times the bills end up never happening because you want to send a block out to get machined you need this head gasket you want to rebuild the entire engine you want to put this clutch and again most of us i mean <laughs> Most of us are just average guys. We don't have money just sitting here that we can just tap in. So most of the cars are just sitting and guys end up losing interest and it gets padded out, but not this one. This one, I'm going to make it as relatable as possible. So like I said, so uh, what I am starting off with is I'm not using the factory intake manifold crossover thing. That's disgusting. Um, but for the rest of it, it should be stock internal non-VVTi 2J and budget turbo setup and over time it will get built it will go faster um but for the most part it's going to be relatable all right so again not going to drag this song any longer so i'm going to end the video here the next one is after i get some more parts for it in a couple of days we'll pick up with that but uh thanks for watching and if you guys want me to cover anything specifically about this whole 2j process let me know for me, I prefer just working and not recording videos, but uh, I love sharing with you guys. So if you guys find this interesting, you want me to cover anything in particular, let me know and I will do that. But until then, I will catch you guys later.